I filed the bills this morning, uh, the 13 budget bills plus a capital improvements bill. And basically, the uh, lays out my vision as, as we're moving forward in this process of where we're going to spend the, uh, the money for the in the budget. It's um, a lot of money for education. Uh, we basically have taken the governor's recommendation recommendation for K-12 funding and put it into budget. We split it into two funds: one general revenue, 122 million, and the, the other one in a fund that. Um, we're calling the surplus revenue fund that will uh, include um, money for education as well as one-time projects. As most of you know, the governor and the House and Senate disagreed on what the revenue estimates would be this year. Um, <clears throat> I have budgeted the general revenue budget to the estimates that the House and the Senate agreed upon, but if the governor's numbers are right, and we do take in more revenue than, than we figured, we we thought was going to come in, then that money would uh, go into the surplus revenue fund and uh, the governor could spend out of that fund. But we have to reach that number first. So that's um, pretty much uh, the, the big difference uh, between uh, the governor's plan and, uh, and our, my plan is the surplus revenue fund. Now we've included money for, as I said, K-12 education. <coughs> Uh, 122 million. The other 156 million goes into the surplus revenue fund. Um, we've in, we have a plan for 2% increase in higher education core funding, plus some 50/50 projects. Um, we've also got a lot of money in there for scholarships. 20 million dollars for Access Missouri. It's a 20% increase in funding. It's an additional $6.7 million for A-plus scholarship programs, which would fully fund the program. And we've got a very large expansion in the Bright Flight scholarship program, largest in state history. Uh, the plan would add a new forgivable loan program that would be available to students going into the top 5 percentile on their ACTs. So <clears throat> if the students went through that program, they would then be able to um, have their loans forgiven if they stayed in the state of Missouri for four years, up to four years, depending on how many years. And that starts with the freshman class. The reason we're doing that, of course, is we want to keep a dedicated workforce here in Missouri. People who've gone to college, uh, whether no matter where they are in the, uh, the academic range, but especially our high-achieving students, we want to keep them in Missouri so they participate in our workforce. So I, it looks to me, I, I consider it a win-win situation on the scholarships. As I said, we've increased all three scholarship programs pretty dramatically. We've put core funding into the universities. We've added money for the community colleges because they were behind. We did, we've got some 50-50 uh, capital improvement programs that are in the general revenue. The rest of the projects are in the surplus revenue fund. Uh, so. With that coupled with the K-12 funding, and there's a, I'll go through the list here shortly, but we've done a lot for education uh, as well as other areas in the budget, but I wanted to certainly emphasize the, uh, the education portion of it. Um, if we look at the, the K-12 funding, I've talked about the $2.7 million, million increase for foundation formula in the two categories. I also put $8.2 million in there for the Missouri Preschool Program in unaccredited and provisionally accredited districts. This is to help the districts that are struggling right now with the, to implement preschool programs if they, um, or to add to the preschool programs they already have, because we want to get these districts out of the unaccredited status and out of provisional accreditation. And we know that a solid qualified preschool program is one way to start that process. I also put in three and a half million dollars for reading programs in unaccredited and provisionally accredited districts. A million dollar increase in the parents as teachers, a million dollar increase for Teach for America, and a ten million dollar increase for transportation funding, which would help primarily rural districts. In higher education, I've already talked about most of these, a two percent increase in core funding, uh, ten million equity funding for community college, the Bright Flight Access Missouri and A-plus scholarship programs, twenty-five million dollars to match private funds that have been raised, 
in uh, four university locations and another $38 million to match private funds raised in the other institutions. In economic development, you can see $4.5 million for matching funds to early stage business development grants, $5 million increase to MTC, $150,000 to certified work ready communities, $5 million increase to tourism, $4 million to the Kansas City area contingent upon the receipt of the 2016 Republican National Convention. Some of the other areas uh, of note, $7.5 million for the biodiesel incentive fund. Uh, partly from, mostly from GR, the rest of it from the um, surplus revenue fund. A 1% cost of living pay raise for state employees, a $25 a month deferred compensation match for state employees. Uh, we eliminate over 80% of the development disabilities wait list. Uh, we've got money in there for newborn screening test uh, courier services. We've expanded the dental coverage to adult Medicaid recipients. One other thing I'd like to say is that I have proposed a 1% cut in state employees across the board for all departments, 1% cut. That's pretty much uh, what I've got on my sheet here. I'll uh, take your questions. Are the three surplus revenue items that you have listed here the only items that it would get money from this surplus fund? Or are there others in, in addition? I think there are others. Um, we've got money in there for voting machines. That's not in there? Foundation formula? Biodiesel, the Ozark Scenic. Capital improvements. And the capital improvements. Yeah, okay, those three. What, what, what's the Ozark Scenic? I don't see that on this sheet. That's not on there. That's to buy the, uh, for the state to buy that uh, federal lands along the Ozark Scenic Riverway. And how much is that? Six million. The operation cost would be six million. Yeah. Assuming that it's, it would be transferred to us. Right. There's language in the bill that reflects that. But the total amount is six million? And that's to purchase the land, or well, just to transfer and operate it? It would be transferred. Assume they would give it to the state. Correct. Okay. But what is the actual dollar amount here on the uh, two percent core budget increase for universities and colleges? I'd have to get that information for you. Yeah. Eighteen million. It's nine million dollars a percent, basically. And the actual dollar amount for the bright light. Seven million. Increase. Increase. Okay. That would be per year. Right. All right. So the uh, funding for universities is smaller than what the governor has recommended. The core, he wanted a 5% core increase. I propose a 2%. And which of the capital projects would be funded? The one at UMSL, Mizzou, Columbia, Kansas City. And Rama. I know, like Mizzou had s several, all of them, or just the engineering building, six point one million. And Mizzou, uh, I'm sorry, it was ten million for the education, uh, the business building. Uh, Kansas City, it was seven point four. Can't remember the building. Enterprise. Enterprise building. And Rama was one point two. And are all of those in the guaranteed 25, or some of those are in the... Uh, those four contingent? are in the guaranteed 25. Okay. That should add up to 25. And, and then the other 38 goes to the rest of the projects. All the other projects that are on the list. So you set up a budget, if I'm interpreting this right, that says, here's sort of the base budget, and then if we're wrong and the governor's right, here are all these contingent items that could get the full amount. Right. We have to reach the GR number of revenue first, okay, before we go into the surplus revenue. So it would be toward the end of the fiscal year, if you understand that, that uh, we could go into the surplus revenue fund. But, but schools then could not budget for receiving this 278. They would have to budget essentially right. for getting the 122, and then That's at correct. the end of the year you're saying they can get a windfall. Or where, whenever we reached uh, the, the uh, revenue numbers past $8.5 billion, basically. It, I mean, it would be far from a windfall. You're talking about less than 3% of the overall budget. So, I mean, right. yes, there would be a, a boost. Keep in mind, we spend well over $3 billion in general revenue on the foundation formula now. Right, but it's uh, a... This is only a less than a 10% increase total. So if the, but, but 
you're saying there has to be the absolute receipts to the treasury of of the money that fits that fills your budget right. cup, for example. And then once things start flowing off into the saucer underneath the cup, then the money can start going. So we're talking probably May of next year before um, you would get to that, that, that number, if not June. So you'd be distributing a large sum of money for the foundation formula in the last weeks of the fiscal year. In the last weeks of the school's fiscal year, it's not going to do them, going to do anything for them this coming school year? Probably not. Okay. But it will help in the future. You expect them to just bankroll that money, carry it over? That's what school districts do. They put it into the cash reserve. And do you have the language that, like the copy actual South language? 2077. 2077. That's for the, that's uh, surplus. surplus revenue language. All right. Fun language. What made the, the University of Missouri projects um, more important um, so that you're going to include them in the space as opposed to um, you know, making them contingent upon the, the, the surplus revenue as you did the other colleges and mm -hmm. universities? Well, the, the, those first four that I mentioned uh, came to me very early in the process. As you probably know, a couple of years ago the legislature passed uh, a bill allowing um, universities to raise private funds for just this purpose. 50-50 match is what they call it. These four projects came to me early on and they had, I asked for the list of donors <laughs> that uh, that had actually contributed, were re ready to contribute and had contributed in many cases to these projects. Because I wanted to make sure they were, I wasn't just being given a list of projects that they would start building and then gather the money later. So these projects were proven to me early on. And um, we had a limited amount of money. <clears throat> so as the other, univer other university projects came in, and, and Mizzou had two or three others that they wanted to do too, and as well as some of the other colleges uh, uh, in, in the funding. But other universities wanted to, uh, to join in too. And they have come forward with uh, their projects. And I haven't checked to see if they have the actual <coughs> list of donors, because I was looking at just the four that I wanted to do here for starters, because I knew we couldn't do much more than 25 million. And for a while there, well, I wasn't sure we could do that. So. Do you know if the state's ever used this sort of contingent budget approach before? I'm not aware that it has, but maybe once or twice. The 50-50 money, will that be in the operating budget or the um, It'll send both. The 50-50 will be in the operating budget for those four projects, 25 million, and the other 38 million will be in the surplus revenue fund. Is that, will be a separate, is that a separate bill then? Or is that technically a part of the same budget bill? That's just well, there are, all the projects are listed in the capital improvements bill. Okay, that's, I think that's what we're using. 21. Oh, I'm so they, sorry. These aren't in House Bill 2. Not in House Bill 3. No, no, they're in the capital improvements budget. I'm sorry. And, and, but will there, and, and following up, will there be a separate appropriations bill? For the surplus um, revenue fund? No, what, what we've done there is we've um, set up the language in 2077 to do this, set up the separate appropriations surplus fund, okay? Throughout the budget, in the areas that I've indicated where we're going to put money into that fund for whatever the reason is, uh, it'll say so on the line in that budget bill. For instance, House Bill 2 will have a line for foundation formula, and it'll have GR, and then it'll have also the surplus revenue fund. That, and it's same thing with the capital improvements on 2019. Um, Scenic River Ways money will be lined. It'll be in the regular budget bill, but it'll have a, a separate appropriation line. Or, you know, it'll be a, coming out of this surplus revenue fund. And what's the reaction been governor's office to the idea of, of because you know you're gonna have to get your bill signed right. to create the, the funds so, right so have you made any of those <coughs> contacts to find out what the reaction is uh not specifically uh we'll, we sent them the language yeah morning. they had the language but is this, is this something you've worked with the senate on we've talked to the senate about it 
talk to him. I mean, do they, from your understanding, do they agree with this approach or just sort of say, here's what we find out? Uh, the Senate Approach Chair did not tell me not to do it. Okay. But what about this request for money for the Kansas City, uh, for the RNC convention? Mm -hmm. Is that, where does that idea come from? Well, they're in the running for the yeah. convention, and uh, they, I think they needed uh, the Kansas City contingent uh, that's putting forth their proposal needed $10 million. They raised six locally. They needed four from the state, which is not unusual. That's happened before. So they uh, came and asked? Yes, they did. Okay. And, uh, of course, we're not going to spend that if we don't get the convention. And now, you, the bright <coughs> light um, seems to be a change from the initial proposal of the governor. The bright light um, seems to be now a full ride, um, and, it, and it goes up to 5%, uh, the top 5% on the, on the ACT or the SAT. Will the underlying Bright Flight program remain the same? Yes. Okay, so they'll For still students be who are in the program now, they'll, they'll continue to go through at 2,500, I think is what it is. Third, well, it's the 3,000 and then 1,000 for fourth and fifth right. Percent, uh, That's right, yeah. percentiles. Will that program continue indefinitely, or are you, are you phasing that out and making no. it a complete loan program? It will continue. Okay, so the loan program now, because the governor had a dollar amount on his loan, mm -hmm. and now you're saying that the loan will be full tuition and fees. Right, but um, starting with a freshman. Okay, mm -hmm. freshman go, will go through the process. So it does, the loan forgiveness program does not apply to sophomores on up. And the governor's original proposal did? I think it did to some extent, yes. That's, uh, that's why our plan is a little cheaper. Okay. So that freshman that comes in, would they still get the $2,000 yes. scholarship? And on, so they're to, if their tuition is fully covered, the $2,000 scholarship is just extra money for their housing or something? No, no, it's part of the, part of the tuition. For instance, uh, Mizzou, I think the top tuition rate at, at Mizzou is like 9,500. Yeah. This this would be like the 2,500 for Bright Flight plus another $7,000 loan on top of that. Okay. So it's all part of. They would use the 9,500 that they're getting through Bright Flight to pay for their tuition, okay. and that would be forgiven if they stayed in Missouri for the four years after college. If they did the four year all the way through Mizzou. That's just tuition. Doesn't cover room and board. Or anything. I see the uh, the ten million in equity funding for community college colleges here. Can you uh, just explain any differences between what the governor put forward for community colleges and what you are putting forward here? I know uh, there were some community college leaders who were not necessarily very pleased with the governor's proposal. What have you done here? Well, I think initially they were not pleased because the governor proposed 5% for four-year universities and 4% for the community colleges. Sure. So we wanted to even that out, and actually I lowered it in both the two, so they should be un equally unhappy now. Um, but uh, there was this in inequity with the community colleges uh, over the years that uh, because of the way the number of students are counted in community colleges versus four-year institutions, there was this disparity that everybody agreed was a, a disparity. So that's, uh, I think the request from the community college was 15 million, we, we put in 10. And the governor had zero for that. That's correct. And there's this, but this also eliminates the money for STEM um, education right. and it eliminates the caring for Missourians uh, mental health um, professions money that the governor proposed for right. higher education as well. Right. right. We put, um, I mean, <clears throat> those are good programs. I'm not going to knock the programs, um, although I really didn't get a lot of detail on the STEM when we talked to colleges about that. We asked them specifically, what would you do with the additional money, and they really didn't have a good answer. But I don't want to bad mouth them on that. It's just that... Um, with the engineering building at Mizzou, the 50-50 match, um, that's, to me that's a STEM initiative because that's, that's a building that's been badly in disrepair for years and we think that the engineering program will grow tremendously because of the building that's going to be constructed there, or renovated actually. Um, in addition, we're doing some other things through economic development to, to encourage engineering and science and technology to come to Missouri to create jobs here in Missouri that will help the kids who are in the engineering fields to, uh, to move through. Um, there's a, 
and I don't want to get into a bit philosophical discussion on this, but if we're worried about kids not going into STEM, um, that begins basically in the grade schools and middle schools to get kids excited about college. Uh, co not college, but engineering and science and technology in to move through into those careers. I think the, I think if we're having a problem in America or in the state with that, it's because our, our elementary schools are not getting the kids excited. And the, and the middle schools, and even the high schools to some extent, aren't giving the kids um, the instruction they need to be, to, to want to go into those fields. So by the time they get to college, it's almost too late. If you don't have a high school basis to go into engineering, you're not going to be successful in, in college engineering. So we need to address that further down. But I did try to try to encourage uh, the continuation and growth of engineering, science and technology, STEM fields um, at the college levels through several initiatives. I, I think I think the scholarship program uh, is going to be very helpful in that area too to get the, the kids who are interested in STEM to to go to Missouri schools. I'm going to go back to just a bigger picture question. Sure. Why do this two-tiered budget? Well, this is the first time in 10 years that we've had uh, a disagreement on the consensus revenue estimate. All right. I think it was back with Governor Holden in 2003 or whatever it was. Um, so we do have this disagreement. Now, we think our number is right, as you, you all see my board here, um, based on our data. But the governor could be right, all right, and uh, based on his data. So we felt it was a, a, a new, because we had this new issue with the disagreement on the revenue estimate, we thought that we would try to address uh, that situation in this way by constructing, as you call it, a two-tiered uh, budget, one with general revenue and the other one with the surplus revenue fund, so that if the, if the governor is right, the money does come in, uh, it can be spent for the things that we've appropriated the money for. And other than the, as we've already discussed, the uh, foundation formula money, which would come in toward the end of the year, we're, you know, we've got some, uh, we've got a lot of the 50-50 funding projects. I mean, those are capital improvement projects, which could be start, you know, started at these universities around the state, too. So if the governor is 100% right, there's $310 million that, that's available this year to spend. The way that your bill works to create this new fund, does that fund just remain in place then past fiscal year 15? And is this is something that future budget committees could use? They could use it if they wanted. Did you put money in there for toward a Fulton bond payment? The Fulton building is in there. Not How much? In Not in the surplus. It's in, it's in GR. Yeah. How much? Forty-six million, I think. Forty-six now. It's got some updated numbers. We may be able to drop that down a couple million dollars, but yeah. the bill right now is forty-six. Right. It's in the capital improvement budget. It's in the twenty nineteen bill. Mm -hmm. It's in twenty twenty. Uh, yeah, twenty. It's a uh, twenty separate. That's right. It's a separate. That's right. It, you should know that. <laughs> <laughs> I filed that bill twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't mean to be flipping about it. No, it's it's the twenty twenty budget bill, and that's well, capital improvements just for Fulton. The other will that I filed this morning is 2019. It has all the other projects in it. This is not a governor who's been um, happy to spend money on items that he didn't recommend. What happens when um, things start? He didn't with, He didn't recommend 50-50. That's correct. What happens when he starts withholding 50-50? Well, I mean, we, we've picked, I think, four good projects. Uh, for starters, and the rest of them are in the surplus revenue fund. If he withholds the money, that's his decision. He's, as we all know, he's withheld a lot of money the last few years, and most of it he's released as the year has gone through. So, we, I would hope that he would would agree with these. I mean, we've, I think we've presented a budget. I've filed a budget here that is pretty fair across the board when we get down into the details as we will you'll see that it, it, it plussed up most of the programs that the governor wanted and that other people wanted just not to the levels that he wanted so I think most people are going to be pretty happy with what they've got although I'm sure there'll be some unhappiness what is your plan when are you going to mark this up next Wednesday we'll start the uh, hearings on this Thursday the analysts will present to the full budget committee the budget committee has the tracking sheets and, and uh, the bills, copies of the bills now, so they have 
plenty of time to, to look over the bills and the tracking sheets and talk to either me or David or, or Mike and his staff. And so from a technical standpoint, any amendments in the committee will be amendments to the House Committee sub? That's correct, the, okay. the bills that I've dropped. What's your final figure on this budget? I don't even know. <laughs> what is it, 25? It's about, um, it's about 877. The total, are you talking about the total budget? Or yeah. The GR is eight. Yeah. Sorry, that's all we really think about. Eight point seven seven. And I'm trying to remember what the governor needed. Is there anything in your budget that's contingent on legislation passing? We have the um, tax amnesty, right? That's the only thing. One percent cost of living adjustment for state employees. Is yes. there any um, uh, anything in here? Um, like the governor said, for uh, I mean, not only is that smaller than the governor recommended, but the, the governor had money for um, deferred compensation. Yeah, yeah. Well, not deferred compensation, but for um, special special needs or not special needs. Special, special categories. Special categories. Yeah, yeah we, we, categories we did raises? put some of that in there too. Mm -hmm. And what categories are those? Uh, gosh, and nurses. I'm not sure if we did anything for. Uh, I think it was about it, right? Mm -hmm. Mental health nurses or. Mental health and at, at corrections facilities, places like that. And your one percent would take effect when? January. January. Okay. There's some even in your own party who have had issues with building things into the budget, tax amnesty, for example. Right. The uh, this other <coughs> budget fund, not exactly the same thing, but do you see that starting to draw some of the same criticism? It could, but I, I explained to the caucus yesterday, and I really haven't had any pushback on it yet, uh, what, what we were doing with this. Or maybe they don't fully understand it yet, but I clearly made it uh, clear to them that this was contingent upon us receiving the $8.5 you know, billion that we had planned on. Anything above that could then be funded out of the surplus revenue fund. So um, unless somebody didn't want to spend the money at all, which is always an issue, we could save the money and... Well, hey, we could do a tax cut. Maybe that would be something that we could do. But uh, yeah. nobody has complained about it yet, but it's still early in the game. The last item here, expand, back. expand dental coverage to adult Medicaid recipients to cut down on emergency room visits. Medicaid reform and transformation. Did you, do, do you have a number? on, you know, what percentage or what dollar amounts have been spent on emergency room visits that are directly related to dental, um, uh, lack of dental care? Well, there are, there's some numbers out there. I'm not sure that uh, we want, I, I think $800,000 or something like that was, uh, was the cost in emergency room payments for dental care. $800,000. Right. How much will dental care coverage for the entire adult Medicaid population cost? I think it's about 17. 17 million GR. Yeah. GR. Same with the, you know, the corresponding 60% federal right. match. It's, are, are there populations that currently have dental coverage in Medicaid? Children do. Only children? Mm -hmm. okay. So we're spending. And, and, seven and Mike, is, is this 17 million, does that cover the ABD population, age, blind, disabled? Or is it just all, all adults up to 100? Okay. So, so to the extent that they're so right. seniors, disabled, and parents would all get all coverage. Right. So we're going to spend seventeen million to save eight hundred thousand. Well, the eight hundred thousand is the amount that we spent on emergency dental procedures for adults. The other argument is that spending more on uh, adult dental has a, an effect on children's health as well. Um, it's just that those savings are harder. And they're harder to capture when, uh, I mean, all of us have had toothaches, maybe, um, and dental problems, and it, it affects our other health, too. So this was one that uh, Representative Allen moved through her committee. She took a lot of testimony on it. She felt it was a pretty good investment. You know, she's no fiscal uh, uh, spend uh, spendthrift. She's, uh, she likes to save money, too. But she felt this was a good expenditure of funds in the Medicaid area. Fresh my memory, was this one of the things that used to be covered and then was cut in 2005? I wasn't here then. Helen will know what I'm Really specific item here. 
Nixon's proposal had uh, six million in additional funding for children's division for some new hires, and I think a kind of a employee retention program. Is is that in here? I don't think we put that in there. Okay. No. I don't remember that being discussed, to be honest with you. Uh, like I said, I um, I had actually talked to the governor's office, Linda Louvering, about a reduction in state workforce and reallocating people to places where they really need to be. And I know that in children's uh, division, there are some division, some uh, parts of that division department that uh, could afford to lose some people, but other departments need some additional people. I think it's specifically for the, the investigation. Child enforcement, yeah. No, there's no question about that. Some of the caseload uh, is pretty high over there. Um, and frankly, I don't know why those decisions weren't made by the department and the governor to just move people over there. They, could, they can do that. The 1%, getting back to that, 1% reduction in total employees. employees. And are we talking, you know, butts in seats, or are we talking empty FTE where no one's, um, where well, no one's working? We're talking FTEs. Uh, okay, for so starters, I mean, that's, if we have 54,000 employees, 540 is the number, roughly. Give or take. And that's supposed to save how much? Well, it's across the board because it's different funds. A GR, I think the savings was, what was it? Just in fringe benefits, it's $2 million plus. Yeah. $2 million plus in fringes, and then there's a GR savings. I'm not sure what the number is. Yeah. 